So uh, the matching process is going to be slightly modified here because we have that job search effort. Um, so now let's look at labor demand, labor supply. Uh, labor, su uh, labor demand is not going to be modified at all actually. It's going to work exactly like in our standard model. So let's, uh, let's establish that here. Um, So how does labor demand work? So we have uh, what we call, as usual, a representative firm. It says, you know, when you think about the model, there are lots of workers, there are lots of small identical firms, but because all the firms um, behave exactly the same, um, we're going to focus on you know, one firm that we call representative, that will act like all the other, uh, like all the other firms. Uh, So what does our uh, firm do? So um, the firm will have you know, L workers. Of these workers, N are going to be producers, and R, so that are going to enter the production function, R are going to be recruiters, that are um, going to be here only to fill the vacancies posted by the firm. Um, so as usual, Okay, so um, what is our uh, so what is our production function here? <coughs> we use our standard uh, kind of production function that we've been using so far. So we have y, which is uh, going to be the output produced uh, by the firm. It's going to be um, A, as usual, or labor um, productivity times N, the number of producers to the power of alpha. Um, so in general, we consider you know, the case of a concave production function, alpha strictly less than one, which gives us a downward sloping labor demand. Uh, but we'll also contrast that with a standard case, you know, from the standard model in which alpha is actually equal to one and we have a linear production function, a horizontal labor demand. In the case of UI, actually, this, this will give kind of contrasting um, properties that will be quite interesting. So we'll have that type of production function. Um, what about the, uh, the wage function? So here's a wage function. Um, we'll assume that it's um, it's a general function that we denote by W, and uh, you know as usual we assume that that function may depend on A, the labor productivity. You know we studied the case with say fixed wage where the wage doesn't depend on A. We studied the case with rigid wage where the wage does depend on A but not uh, you know, not one for one. We studied uh, the, the case of uh, bargaining, in which uh, you know A also uh, influences um, the wage. So we'll assume that the, we'll uh, allow the wage to depend on A. And uh, here, something that's key is that we'll also allow the wage to depend on uh, unemployment insurance. Okay. Um, so and when we you know, kind of study different cases, uh, we'll see we'll see actually what, what can happen. And in particular, what we're going to see is that when we have, say, bargaining, um, you know, through surplus sharing, actually, because unemployment insurance affects um, the, out, the outside option of workers, you know, how much workers get if they become unemployed, then unemployment insurance is actually going to affect the wage. And it's not surprising, if you remember, when we studied bargain wages, we know that the wage depend, you know, depended on Z, which was the value of uh, unemployment, but from an uh, unemployed worker's perspective, that value of unemployment depends on the on benefits. So it's very clear that if you have bargaining, 
your wage is going to depend on the generosity of your benefits. Um, and so um, here in general, we'll allow the wage to also depend on UI, uh, not only on productivity. Okay? So we'll see you know, what happens when this type of things uh, when this type of things arise. Okay? And so we have production function, we have the wage function, and then the last thing we need to look at is just um, what is the recruiter producer ratio? Because at recruiter producer ratio, usually we, we um, computed it in a world with a balanced flow, kind of in a dynamic setup where jobs are constantly created and destroyed. Here it's a one period model. So the recruiter producer ratio has just a slightly different expression, but it's very easy to compute it. So let's just do it. Um, so that's going to be uh, pretty simple. So the root job producer ratio, which as usual we call, we call two of theta, which is r divided by n. Okay. So uh, let's see for five seconds. So how many workers uh, does the firm want to hire? So the firm wants to hire l workers. So we have l hires. Okay. Because you know we assume that in, originally everybody is unemployed, so it means originally the firm has no workers. So we need l hires. How many vacancies do you need to get L hires? Well, the number of vacancies that you need is the number of hires that you want to do divided by the probability that a vacancy is filled. The probability that a vacancy is filled, we know what it is, is Q of theta, the vacancy filling probability. So the number of vacancies that you want is L divided by Q of theta. So say if you have a, a one half chance of filling your vacancies and you need to post twice as many vacancies as uh, you want to have number of uh, hires. Okay, great. So that's the number of vacancies. How many recruiters do you need to fill to you know take care of these vacancies? Well, we know that the co the number of recruiters per vacancy that's required is this parameter that we call R. Uh, so the number of recruiters big R is R times V. So the uh, number of recruiters times the number of vacancies, and so it's going to be r times l over q of theta. Okay? So what do we have? Uh, so the number of recruiters, we have that the number of recruiters r is r times l over q of theta. But l, which is the number, so it's r divided by q of theta times l. l, of course, the number of workers in the firm is just r plus n. Okay, and so here what I can do is I can divide uh, the left hand side and the right hand side uh, of the equation by n. So if I do that, I get r divided by n, here I get r divided by n, here I get 1. Okay. And R divided by N, of course, that's just tau, right? Uh, so what I get is that tau is equal to R over Q of theta times 1 plus tau. And so now, if I reshuffle things around, what I get is that tau is equal to uh, R divided by Q of theta divided by uh, 1 minus R divided by Q of theta. And so if you multiply numerator and denominator by Q of theta, you get your final expression that tau is equal to R over Q of theta Minus R. So that's not very surprising. That's basically the same expression as before, except that there is no S, you know, no, no separation rate. So it's the same expression that we had in the dynamic model, except uh, if S, the separation rate was equal to 1. That's not surprising. You know, in the dynamic model, if your separation rate is equal to 1, it means all workers 
lose their job you know, after one unit of time, which is exactly the setup here because here we start from a situation where the firm has no workers. So here we are not very surprised, but you know, it's good to make sure that everything is consistent. So the rooftop pressure ratio, tau of theta, uh, it's just going to be r over q of theta minus r. So it'll have all the same properties that we had, uh, that we had before. Okay, um, so now, now that we have all this, what is the profit function for our firms? How, many, how much profit does um, the firm make? So the profit of the firm is, you know, if we assume again that all the goods that are produced are sold uh, at a price, you know, of one, uh, the profit is just then just going to be the output minus, uh, which, you know, the output will just be the revenue of the firm minus the cost of operating the firm. The cost of operating the firm is just the wage bill, which is the wage times the number of workers. Okay, uh, so now what is all this? <coughs> output as usual it's A and alpha. It's just you know, our production function, so it depends on L minus W times, and of course the number of workers in the firm is just one plus tau of theta times n. So number of producers times 1 plus tau of theta to translate producers into total number of workers. Okay? And of course, you know, we can do that because here, you know, tau of theta times n is the number of recruiters. So when we say 1 plus tau times n, it's the same as saying n plus r, which is the same as saying l. Okay? Um, and so you recognize this profit function is the same the same as in the usual this is exactly the same as in the usual model which means that we get the same labor demand and so you know I'm just going to uh, The labor demand is going to depend on theta, uh, and you know the labor demand possibly could depend on UI because the wage may depend on UI. So let me allow for that, so that we can kind of contrast cases in which wages respond to UI and cases in which they don't. So here we just have a general wage function. So far we haven't really specified it. So as usual, you know, this is going to be a downward slow peak uh, labor demand. So it's going to be downward sloping if the production function is strictly concave, if alpha is strictly less than one. And as usual, it's in the case where alpha is just equal to one, you know, we'll get uh, a horizontal. So this is nothing changes, like all what we've seen before applies if alpha is equal to one. Something that's interesting is that uh, the labor demand may respond to UI if the wage responds to UI. So this shows that um, if you're thinking that your labor demand may be affected by UI, it means that you're thinking about a, a wage channel in which wages are affected. So for instance, if I raise UI that raises wages, you know, through the bargaining that we've talked about, then you raise UI, you raise wages that's going to depress your labor demand. So that would be a channel through which UI may affect labor, labor demand through the wage channel. Okay. Um, all right, so this is our labor demand. So now let's move to the labor supply. Labor supply is going to be quite different um, because we have this, um, because now, you know, unemployed workers, they have to decide how much to search. So now, not only firms make a decision deciding 
how many workers they want to hire and how many vacancies they want to post. Of course, these two things are linked. Now, also, work, unemployed workers make a decision because they have to decide how much they want to search for a job. Okay? So the labor supply is going to be more complex. It's going to cut to also um, include that endogenous uh, search effort. 